What if the end times are closer than you think? A question that has undoubtedly crossed the minds of many, stirring up a whirlwind of emotions and thoughts. The concept of the end times, the apocalypse, or the final days, whatever you may call it, is a topic that has intrigued and mystified humanity for centuries. The end times are a concept woven through the tapestry of human history, seen in the writings and prophecies of various cultures and religions. For some, it's a literal end of the world scenario, a cataclysmic event that will obliterate life as we know it. For others, it's a metaphorical end, a transformation of consciousness, a shift from old ways to new. In the realm of science, the end times take on a different hue. Scientists speculate about the potential demise of our planet through natural disasters, pandemics, or even the eventual death of our sun. Others see the end times in a more philosophical light as a concept that reminds us of our mortality and the impermanence of all things. Then there are those who view the end times as a myth, a mere figment of human imagination designed to keep us in check or to offer solace in times of uncertainty. They argue that the world has always been in a state of flux and that change, even drastic change, is just a part of life's natural cycle. There are as many theories and beliefs about the end times as there are stars in the sky. Some of these views may resonate with you, while others may seem far-fetched or even ludicrous, and that's okay. The purpose here isn't to convince you of a certain perspective, but rather to open up a space for dialogue and contemplation. Whether you believe in the end times or not, being prepared for any form of crisis is a wise move. After all, the future is a mystery, and while we can't predict it with absolute certainty, we can equip ourselves to face whatever it may bring. How do you prepare spiritually for a time of crisis? Now that's a question that demands some serious pondering. Preparing isn't just about stocking up on food and necessities, it's also about fortifying your spirit, your inner self. Imagine a house built on a shaky foundation. It might look sturdy on the outside, but when the storm hits, it crumbles. The same is true for us humans. If our spiritual foundation isn't solid, we can easily be swept away by the winds of adversity. That's why it's crucial to have a strong spiritual backbone. So how do you build that spiritual backbone? It's about cultivating practices that nourish the spirit. Meditation, for instance, helps us connect with our inner selves, sharpening our awareness and focus. It's like a sanctuary where we can find solace and peace amidst the chaos. Prayer, on the other hand, isn't just a religious act. It's a way of reaching out to something greater than ourselves. It's about expressing gratitude, seeking guidance and surrendering our worries. It's a reminder that we're not alone in our struggles. And then there's mindfulness, the art of being fully present in the moment. It teaches us to appreciate the now, to not get lost in the anxieties of the future or the regrets of the past. It's a practice that fosters peace and tranquility, qualities that are invaluable in times of crisis. These practices aren't just about calming the mind or soothing the soul. They're about building inner strength and resilience. They prepare us to face whatever comes our way with grace, courage, and wisdom. They remind us that we have the power to weather any storm, to rise above any challenge. Remember, the world outside is unpredictable, ever-changing. But the world within, that's something we can control. That's where we find our peace, our strength. It's where we prepare for the unseen, the unknown. In the end, it's not just about surviving a crisis, it's about thriving amidst it. And that requires more than just physical readiness, it requires spiritual readiness. A strong spiritual foundation can provide comfort and guidance in times of uncertainty. What practical steps can you take to prepare for the end times? A question that might seem daunting at first, but once you begin to break it down, it becomes clear that there are actually a number of practical actions you could take. Firstly, consider the essentials of human survival, food and water. In times of emergency, these may not be easily accessible. Therefore, it's wise to store a supply that could last you and your loved ones for a significant period. Non-perishable food items, canned goods and bottled water are all good options. Remember, it's not about hoarding, but about being prepared. Next, survival skills. 
You don't need to transform into a wilderness expert overnight, but having a basic understanding of skills such as building a fire, finding and purifying water, or even basic first aid could be invaluable. There are plenty of resources available to help you learn these skills at your own pace. Then, let's talk about communication. In an age where we're used to instant global connectivity, it's easy to forget how important local, person-to-person -person communication can be. Establishing a network of trusted individuals and having a plan for how you'll stay in touch if traditional methods are unavailable is an important part of practical preparedness. Lastly, safety. This can encompass many things, from knowing potential safe locations in your area to having a plan for evacuation if necessary. It could also include learning about personal defense or having supplies like flashlights, blankets, and basic tools on hand. All these steps might seem overwhelming when looked at all at once. But remember, preparedness is a journey, not a destination. You can start small, with one or two items from each category, and build from there. So, why go through all this trouble? It's simple. Practical preparedness can provide a sense of control and security in uncertain times. It's about having the peace of mind that comes from knowing you've done what you can to safeguard yourself and your loved ones. Practical preparedness can provide a sense of control and security in uncertain times. How do you balance spiritual and practical preparation? This question is often the crux of the matter when it comes to preparing for the end times. It's like walking a tightrope, with spiritual readiness on one side and practical readiness on the other. Let's consider a tree. The roots, unseen but vital, represent our spiritual readiness. They ground us, nourishing our beliefs and values. The branches, on the other hand, are our practical readiness. They're the visible actions we take, the plans we make. Both are necessary for the tree to thrive. In the same way, spiritual and practical preparedness are not mutually exclusive, but complementary. One grounds us, while the other equips us. It's about finding a harmony between the two, like a well-tuned instrument. It's about understanding that the strength of our roots feeds the growth of our branches. Balance is key in preparation. Both spiritual and practical preparedness have their place. What's the key takeaway from all this? Let's distill it down to its essence. We've discussed the concept of end times, not as a myth or legend, but as a potential reality. We've explored how to prepare spiritually, nurturing a deep connection with your inner self and the divine. We've also dived into practical preparation, equipping ourselves with necessary skills and resources for survival. The crux of our discussion, however, lies in the balance between these two. It's about intertwining the spiritual and the practical, creating a harmonious blend of inner strength and outer preparedness. This balance enables us to not only survive, but thrive in any form of crisis that life throws our way. The journey towards this balance begins today, not tomorrow. It's about taking small, consistent steps towards preparedness, both spiritually and practically. Remember, preparedness is not about fear, but about empowerment. It's about being ready to face whatever comes your way with strength and peace of mind. 